Two months ago, we tried to take a trip to Canada's east coast, and that was until our van exploded. Something's really wrong. This is bad. This week, we are continuing to prepare our van for a second attempt at this trip, but you're not gonna believe what happened. Let me take you back. We have so much to get done before we leave to make traveling in a half converted sprinter van much more comfortable. But it's time to get to work. I wanna feel first order of business is getting some white interior paint for the ceiling and our benches. So the game we're playing right now is trying to find a floor that will match the wood tones in our van. So if you don't know, the van is gonna be completely white, all the interior is gonna be white, and there's gonna be white shiplap. Hey, it's it's, still grandma vibes. It's just, it's just as pale as you. <laughs> so the question is, do we go dark or do we go light? I want the dark. I think I want the dark. You want the dark? I want the dark. I think I want the light. Look at this. It's like a beach house. But this will hide dirt. And it's gonna be me wow. who's sweeping. What? I don't care if it'll show dirt. It's like 20 square feet. We'll just clean it. Look at it, it's beautiful. It matches it perfectly. I like it, I don't even care if it'll show the dirt. Also, it's already going in, so I hope you're okay with it. Oh, you made a decision? I love you, Savannah Islands. Who's Savannah? We chose Savannah Islands. Kind of sounds like a porn star name. Boring. Check. So Colin's inside making some food. I'm enjoying a nice iced coffee and trying to get started on mapping out our floor. The floor that we chose has a couple different grains in it. So there's like some boards that are solid and some that have a little bit more knots and other details in it. So I'm just trying to match them up and lay them out. So it'll save us more time and stress on the other end when we get to cutting. The man returns with food. Don't judge me, YouTube. That is definitely not vegan. Hashtag not vegan. I respect all of you if you are plant based. But we're going primal today. Two grass fed steaks, definitely not gonna eat that all in a bowl of local fruit. All right, if you need me, I'll just be here snacking. what you like to call a backseat floor installer. No, snap it in the corner. I'm definitely glad you listened to me and got the light one. Okay, so this actually isn't our first board. We tried our first one off camera. Uh, it didn't go so well. Oh no, it was the wrong side. So the length was right, but the side of the board was wrong. Um, based on where we were trying to stagger the boards, the seam was actually lined up with the seam in the plywood underneath. It's time to start anew. And we also realized that we were uh, starting from the wrong side of the van. So we're doing it for real now. Installation should start in the left hand quarter and proceed from the wall with the tongue facing the wall. So as always, when starting any new project, RTFM, read the manual. So just as Kat says, the first cut is the deepest. We're finding the first cut is the deepest. We're finding the first cut is the hardest. Maybe it will. So we ended up going with vinyl plank flooring. So it's completely waterproof and mildew resistant. And after much debate, we got it in Savannah Islands. Definitely not a porn star name. So we just made it to our third row and it's getting easier, thankfully. 
Unfortunately, we started on the wrong side of the van, which was a funny little mistake. Definitely not my fault. It was pages. But we're finally making some good progress, and it's looking really good. I'm all right to hide in your DMs. Make you feel so right like you did last weekend. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. This looks like shit. I thought you guys planned it out, and we did. So there's a bunch of different grains in the boards. So we've decided to use the ones that we don't like as much at the back of the van, which will be covered by the benches and the slide out. And then we're using the nice, what, like, what would you call this, like solid boards, more solid boards at the front uh, with a little bit more detail here and there. So as you can see, we are not matching up the grain on grain uh, because you're not gonna see it anyway. It took us a while, but I feel like now we're flooring experts. Last row, let's, let's go. go. Is that it? That's it. And just like that. We got a floor. <laughs> the floor looks really good and it feels really good to be making progress on some of our projects. I'm really happy we went with the light colored, to be honest. You were right. The light color looks really good and I'm really happy with it. I'm always right. Some of you might be wondering why we chose to insulate our van with Havelock wool. In a van, it's really hard to escape moisture, but luckily Havelock wool is actually hygroscopic. And hygroscopic means it actually absorbs moisture from the air. For many of us uh, live in maybe colder climates, what do you use when it's cold outside? You cover yourself in wool because you can get sweaty, but you're still warm and dry. And that's what's so special about this type of insulation. And another reason we chose Havelock wool for our van insulation is it's actually completely sustainable, renewable, biodegradable, and compostable. So it actually has a low carbon footprint compared to other insulation materials. And because it is non-toxic, we know it's super safe to put in our van. The space within the bars of the ceiling are not even close to the same size as the bats. So we have to figure out a way to mount them up. Please forgive us, this is not gonna look pretty, but we just need to get it up and we're just gonna tape the crap out of it. And the ceiling part's pretty hard with um, such flimsy and non-rigid insulation. So I don't know how people do this. Usually people do this with string um, and in any of the newer Sprinter vans, there's like little holes that you could actually like weave a, a string pattern. We don't got that, so we're using some tape. Look at this skylight, how beautiful is that? I don't think we've properly showed it off before. Mm. This is a Dometic Hecky. It slides down, locks in. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, it's a work, it's, a, it's just It's just a thing of beauty. Thanks, big little van. Thank you. Oh, it's, strip, it's yeah, it's off. Yeah. This is hard. Maybe we need to watch a YouTube video or something. Oh God. All right, keep just keep the tape rolling. This to tuck to the other tape, tuck tape. Holy tucking insulation. Well, friends, it's not the prettiest thing. Turns out putting Havelock on the ceiling is pretty difficult. Even though it's the absolute perfect type of product, we think we have to go uh, watch a couple YouTube videos and try to figure it out. All right, we've got our... We didn't quite finish the insulation because we still have to solve our ceiling conundrum, but in an effort to keep Checking things off the list, it's time to build a ladder. Mm-hmm. 
you want to go right? Tell us all wherever you want to go. We can make it feel like home. And well, just like that, we have ourselves a ladder. Thanks for the help, Dad. Before I put up the ceiling insulation, I knew I had to try to find a solution for the beams. My solution was to use some big gap filler to actually shoot some spray insulation in and it would expand to the size of the beam. While I do think it was actually a pretty good idea because this stuff actually has an almost identical R value per inch to our Havelock wool and is a little bit easier to maneuver in these beams. But one thing I didn't account for was how messy it was gonna be. Holy shit. So I ran some string through the ribs of the ceiling columns before I spray foam them, hoping that this will help secure our ceiling insulation. But I have a second idea. Commonly when people insulate a van, they do a vapor barrier on the inside. So what I'm thinking is, if the strings don't work, we'll cut large strips of polyurethane vapor barrier and we'll run them front to back of the van to help hold the insulation in. With Havelock wool, it's not necessary to use a vapor barrier, so we won't seal it completely and we'll just use it as basically a super thin Thing, reinforcement to hold up our insulation. Then when we install our ceiling, we can have the option to remove it or just leave it as we'll leave sections for the insulation to breathe. Last night, I cleaned up all of the spray foam insulation and started installing some of the Havelock wool on the upper sides using spray adhesive. And I hate spray adhesive. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of strong scents in general, paint, adhesives. I don't know what you have in the States, but in Canada, we have Bed Bath and Body Works. Literal hell. So the next thing on the list is a small task, but the nice thing is it will actually prevent the insulation from falling on us while we sleep on our trip. We actually bought this bullseye primer. It is a water-based interior exterior primer. And for some reason, we bought it in gray. And the real reason was the lady at the hardware store told us it was 10 bucks cheaper. In a van, it's hard to escape moisture. So this is going to seal it, preventing it from growing mold or mildew on the road. So if anyone was curious what we were doing with the panels, they actually cover this area um, and it'll actually hold in all of this insulation, which will be really, really nice. And that way, none of it falls out while we drive. But while we wait for those panels to dry, we are going to tackle a very important task before our trip, which is installing our solar panels. And I have someone that I want you guys to meet. Say hi. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Internet, meet my dad. Hi, internet. <laughs> we are going to attempt to put all four of our solar panels in between our skylight and our max air fan. The roof rack system we chose for this van is from Vantech. And the reason why we love it is it attaches to the rain gutters on the van instead of drilling holes in the ceiling. To attach all four solar panels to the cross beams, we have to install it on the ground and then together bring up all four solar panels at once. So we got all the solar panels mounted to the brackets um, using these deck brackets. We used some self-tapping screws, which are amazing. So what we're doing now is measuring the distance between the bars so we can finish putting up the side rails. And then we're gonna lift this whole thing up and install it for good. 
this beam is so close to the skylight somehow it's gonna work we just got so lucky that we installed these suckers in the perfect spot for this look who decided to show up someone's gotta work oh someone's gotta work hi how Hello. you doing hi the installation on the ceiling is a little bit more difficult because we're not putting our actual ceiling up right away and because we are going to be driving on a trip so we've tried originally just taping it to the ceiling and that didn't work because it was quite droopy. So I think the route we're going with is we're going to tape the poly to the ceiling and have the insulation in the middle. So the strategy is here we have three strips of poly. I cut to roughly a foot um, but we want the insulation to breathe so there's going to be a little bit of air gaps. So we are going to attach with tuck tape. We're going to put in a bat and then attach the next one and then we're going to Move on, and then we're gonna tuck it up, and we're gonna <laughs> tuck it up. As we kept working through the night, I started feeling a throbbing pain in my side. But we kept working, pushing to get ready for the trip. It just kept getting worse. I called my friend who's an ER nurse, and she said to go to the hospital right away. What proceeded was 13 hours of waiting and wondering testing and confusion. And the next thing I know, I had emergency surgery. Well, this doesn't have the ending that we thought it would. Definitely not. It was 30 hours before we were going to leave on our trip. I had emergency surgery to remove an organ. My appendix. <laughs> And we were gonna try round two of making it out to the East Coast, and that obviously didn't happen. Some say we're cursed, because anytime we try to leave for a trip, especially to the same destination, something happens. The East Coast just doesn't want it us. It just doesn't want us. And apparently we missed a hell of a time. I don't actually think we're cursed, but it is kind of funny that every time we try, something happens. But we're gonna take it slow for the time being. Uh, I need to make a full recovery and then we'll start diving deep back into the band build. But I think we have one more thing to put on our checklist. Remove organ. That's it for the checklist. I guess we're done. Until next week, be well.